Hello and welcome back to another episode of my MotoGP 22 career mode and today we're here for the final episode of the Moto3 class. Now if you haven't seen the previous episode I do recommend you go check that one out because it's really crucial for setting up this episode. Now in the last episode I expected that we would win the championship but it turned out we didn't. We didn't actually end up winning the championship because we had a really poor race in Chang because of the wet weather. Won at Phillip Island, but it wasn't quite enough to overcome that gap. So now we've got another match point here at Sepang. It's come down to the final episode of the season between me and John McPhee. However, it's pretty much guaranteed. I only need to score three points across these two races to actually win the championship. And McPhee has to win both races. So if McPhee doesn't win one of these races, we're automatically champion anyway. So it shouldn't be too bad. We should hopefully be able to wrap this one up with without too much pressure. But I'm going to still head into the weekends with the objective to try and win. Because trying to win the championship with a race win is always good. And we're also trying to win the team's championship as well. So I need to try and finish as high up in the order as I can. But without any further ado then... Let's head into the Malaysian Grand Prix. Not sure how this is going to go exactly. The AI don't tend to be too good at this circuit, but I remember in MotoGP 21, they were pretty good in the Moto2 class here. So you never know. I guess we'll have to head into the weekend and just see how it pans out. So then at the end of practice, as usual, we have managed to top the session, but the AI are pretty competitive. You can see it's only a couple of attempts there. Some of the AI a little bit further down are a bit further away. If you look, they, they soon drop off by quite a bit. Elia Bartolini is actually about a second off me, but he didn't it didn't feel like that. He was following me around whilst I was doing my couple of laps, and I didn't really drop him that much, but I guess probably I was about a second quicker than him. But yeah, the AI seemed pretty competitive there. It was a medium-medium for me there with Power 2, so there definitely is going to be more time going into qualifying. So let's head into it now. We should get straight through to qualifying 2 with that time, I believe. So we'll head into qualifying 2 now, and we'll go for pole position. I'll tell you what, I've just ended that there and it's gone to the combined times. Look at their previous compared to their current, so it tells me that the simulated times are really bad. They are so far off what they should be, so I have to make sure they get a fair shot of doing some times in qualifying. So here we are then in qualifying two, and of course I've stayed top of the session because the simulated times do seem very, very broken. I also watched FP3s and they were similar to FP1, so it wasn't just a bug there. So I'm going to have to make sure that AI do get some time to do some laps. It is a fairly long circuit, so there should be plenty of time. If I do maybe an out lap, uh, then a flying lap, and maybe two in laps, just to give them enough time to actually set decent qualifying times, it just makes it a little bit more fair. But I think I should be on pole position either way. We're coming through Q1, then we've got Dennis Onchu, Yama Masia, that's a bit of a shock there. Suzaki as well, a little bit of a shock, and then Danny Holgado. So both the IO boys coming through there, along with one of the Tech 3s as well. So three Red Bull KTMs coming through, and a Husqvarna. One thing that is going to be quite crucial this weekend is the tyre wear. I know I've said that the last couple of episodes, and I know I said that at Phillip Island, and it turned out to be no problem at all. In fact, even in qualifying, it's recommending that I use a hard tyre. So that actually might be worth noting. The soft may not work here in qualifying. It might be a bit too hot because you can see track temperature 44 degrees, air temperature 31 degrees. It's always nice and hot as Sepang in real life and obviously in the game as well. So the tyres are going to be a bit of a concern because you saw how warm they were. I'd only done a few laps on them. So for the race, this could be a problem, and even now in qualifying, it might be a bit of a problem. I might not be able to make these soft tyres last enough, so I'm going to have to probably be a bit careful on the outlap. Obviously, the soft tyre is a much better tyre in this game than it was in GP21, and the recommendations do tend to be slightly off, to be fair. They're never really that great, the recommendations, what it tells you to use for the tyres. Yeah, we'll try and nurse it a little bit on this outlap. I might drop a bit back from the CX. because I think he's just going to get in my way otherwise, so I'm just going to let him go through and pull away a little bit. That much of a gap should be fine. Especially if we go a bit slower around the rest of this lap as well. The tyres got pretty hot into the penultimate turn there. So that might be something to watch out for. I might actually run out of grip uh, on this lap. I might have to come back in and do a medium-medium run anyway. About the last corner and a little bit on the kerb. Not a great way to start our lap. But we'll keep going. Hopefully we can do something good. Look at the tyre temps as we go down towards this final turn. They're very, very warm. So the tyres, they were moving around under me quite a bit on this lap. They weren't great. So I might actually be able to get a better lap out of medium meters. But I've caught up to Masira a lot. I've got a bit wide for that puddles, but uh, not puddles, but through the final turn. So it might have cost me a little bit. Still red sectors though. We've got towards Lion Garcia, 2125. What am I gonna do here? 2115. So that's pretty pretty handy there compared to the AI. So a second clear of them, but I will give them a bit longer to try again. But Masia, because he's fourth place, so we must have been over a second quicker than Masia. I did close up to him quite a bit on that lap, to be fair. Dennis on shoot third place. So that's a bit more like it for Dennis on shoot. But you can see Fodger, McPhee, and Mino are not on that screen at all. So I assume they're still to do decent lap times. So they'll probably jump up the order a little bit. But I'm going to give them enough time to do it. But we should get pole position. With, oh, there's Fodger up to second place, speaking of him. 
But yeah, we've got a second clear of everybody else, so yeah, I reckon we'll be on pole position there. I'm just going to give the AI time to do their laps. So then, at the end of the session, the time, of course, was good enough for pole position, but it wasn't a second clear like it was when I sort of left you last. It's now about seven tenths of a second clear of actually Chavi Artigas in second place, John McPhee in third. So obviously, he's the guy we've got to keep his eye on, although, of course, we only have to score a few points anyway, so we don't actually have to beat McPhee, but I still want to anyway. Mario Aji, once again, right up there in fourth place. So I'm not sure what they did in the previous patch. But they definitely, they, I think they've made a mistake there with the AI rider performance. There's no disrespect to Aji, of course, but he's not been fourth place consistently like throughout dry sessions like he has been the last couple of episodes. But yeah, McPhee up there in third place then. The AI's pace of the race is going to be pretty good. Obviously, we haven't got like six tenths in hand over them at all. The, the race pace seems pretty much there, especially if I'm going to have to look after the tyres slightly because if I'm pushing the whole race, it is only four laps, of course, so... It shouldn't be too much of a problem, but if I'm pushing, I may have to just watch the tyres a little bit. And as well, we know that AI can get a bit dirty, so the one thing I don't want is to be knocked off. Because if I get knocked off, then that's probably no points, and then it goes to the Valencia. So I want to have a good scrap with the AI, try and fight for the win, but I've also just got to be careful and make sure I don't get knocked off. So we're down here on the grid then looking at John McPhee, but I just noticed something with uh, Artigas in the last shot. How I haven't noticed that all season, I don't know, but you can still see the old like Proustal leathers underneath the CF Moto ones. Like, you can see the Proustal GP logo and stuff. I never like the basically so the kit from last year is underneath like the, the light map maybe is wrong. That's weird. I've only just noticed that. A little bit of a tangent. I do apologise, but I just noticed that then and it completely was all I could think about. But either way, we're down here on the grid on pole position once again. I have no idea how many poles we've got this season. We'll have to have a look after we've done Valencia. We'll have to look at the stats for this season and sort of just round off Moto three in that aspect. But right now we've got a championship to fight for. Well, fight for I guess is kind of a strong word. I don't have to just score in the points. But I want to try and win the race. That's my goal to try and win today. Tires, they are going to be a bit of a problem, but I'm just going to go medium, medium. I think medium, medium should last because I did about four laps in practice and there was still, there's still enough grip left. So I reckon medium, medium will be fine. Even though the game is recommending hard tires, it should be absolutely fine. But it will be worth maybe just noting what tires that AI are on because if there are people on soft rears, I think they will be in trouble before the end of the race. A bit like we've seen in the MotoGP class where the riders have picked soft tires and stuff and they've just dropped back. So we might get a little bit of that in this race, but we'll get it started now then. And let's hope it's an absolutely titanic battle. Who will celebrate victory in the Malaysian Grand Prix? Riders have completed their warm-up lap and are lined up on the Sepang grid, ready for the off. So here we are then on pole position. And I did just quickly have a look at the tyres. McPhee is on a soft rear, so we'll have to watch out for that. Waiting for the lights to go out here. Then at Malaysia, lights out and away we go for my favourite track of the entire season. So I definitely that's another reason why I want to win. Obviously, I want to win with the championship. But also, I really like the circuit, so I really want to try and win here for that reason as well. So we're going to turn one. I've missed my braking zone a bit there. I've ran very wide, very Mugello-esque that. Big mistake from myself. I think I've kept the lead this time. There's been a bit of crash behind. Not sure who's involved in that. You can see there's Artigas looking right up the inside, but we've kept the lead for now. So no problems there. We've got about three tenths of a second lead. That's obviously not enough to be safe, but we didn't lose the lead, so that's the important part. So I was saying on the grid that McPhee has a soft rear on, so does Fodger. So I think they're both on hard front soft rear. McPhee actually might be on medium front soft rear. I think Fodger's definitely on hard soft. And Mario Aggi's on soft soft. So Mario Aggi, I think we're going to see him slip through the order. I can't see him sustaining a soft soft sort of run for the entirety of the race. Obviously it is only four laps like I said, but even still we saw the softs were pretty second hand after a lap. So yeah, I'd expect Mario Aggi to, to really struggle with both uh, soft tyres there. But we'll see. The AI highway I don't think it's the same as the players, but it does seem to at least make some difference. We've got four tenths of a second lead over Artigas right now. So we should be safe with his hairpin, hopefully. That's pretty much all you need. You just need a few tenths of a second, make sure you don't get dive bombed. Although, I think basically anything under half a second, then they'll go for it. So <laughs> we've got to watch out for that. McPhee's now to second place. So McPhee is now the one chasing after me. Well, Artigas is back in front of him now anyway, so... The fee's no longer behind me, but the AI are still pretty close. So I've got to watch out. They don't do anything uh, too outrageous. Picked up a trap limits warning. So that's my bad. Always feels really weird to say this after the second lap. We're about to start the penultimate lap of the race. I just made a big mistake at the last corner. McPhee once again gets up into second place. I want to have a little bit more of a lead because if they do speed up on the final lap, I'm in trouble with only six tenths. Oh, McPhee's down! McPhee's down! That's it! That's it over. We've won the championship regardless now. Because I doubt McPhee is going to score any points. Well, McPhee's not going to win the race in there, which is what he has to do. So, I think we are the world champion. 
We've run really wide. That's going to be two shot limits, one is in a row. We've got to be careful. I've just got to keep the composure now. That means I can actually fight all out for this race win because we've got the title regardless. So the win was really my objective, but we've lost so much time to Artigas. I was a bit caught off guard by that, then I made the mistake. So Artigas is only a couple tenths behind. Aji's right there as well. Surprised Aji's still hanging in at this point of the race. We've got to watch out for Artigas because within, within dive bomb range, definitely now, we've lost a good chunk of time on this lap. So yeah, Artigas is right there. So this is going to come down to the final lap. And I don't like last lap battles with gas, uh, not gas, gas, CF motor riders. There's been another yellow flag, but I almost lost the front. I can't even take my... Oh, Aji's up to second. How has Aji got second place now? So we're now against someone on soft softs on this last lap. There's no, not a chance he should still be. And they taken the lead. Oh, we've had contact with him. Oh, bit of contact with Aji. That's really affected him badly. I've lost a lot of momentum on the curb. Apologies to Aji for that. But here comes Artigas. I didn't expect. I think that was my fault. I didn't expect him to sort of run that wide line out to the exit. I thought they just kind of held the tight line. I've gone into the last corner a bit hot. That could be curtains for me. Yep, yeah, we've had a few riders caught the inside. Suzuki being one of them. Well, both the Leopards. And we've dropped behind Artigas as well. We're going to use a little bit of Palmo 3 here. Try and make the pass. Artigas seems very slow compared to the two Leopard riders. But they all seem slow compared to me with my Palmo 3. And we're going to take the lead into the first corner on the brakes around the outside. Yes. So we've, re we've retaken the lead of the race. We've been hit a little bit by Suzuki. There's Suzuki back up the inside. We're going to try and hang it around the outside. Suzuki's very wide to turn two though. So am I. We've still got the lead for now. Artigas back up to second place. Achi's had that to sixth place. So I kind of feel sorry there for, for Aji because he took the lead very briefly there. Artigas having a look. I'm very glad that I've got plenty of fuel left. Obviously, I've not used any so far this race. Any any Palmo 3 except very briefly off the line. I thought I was going to pick up three track limits waters in a row there at that corner. But we managed to avoid it on this occasion. Artigas is right there as we go down towards the hairpin. I'm pretty sure I can outbreak him. But you know what they are like with their dive bombs. Especially if I've gone in a bit hot, which I have indeed. That's going to allow Artigas to surely. No, actually it's not. But he might get the inside to turn 10. Not quite. I feel like I just gained so much time on the brakes. I didn't lose it so much when I did run wide. I know which corner they're going to attack though. Definitely the penultimate, well, maybe even before, but they're definitely going to come up the inside of the penultimate turn, that's for sure. There's been another crash behind. There's always something going on in this race. I've gone very wide. I've messed this up, like, a lot, the penultimate turn. That's allowed Artigas straight up the inside. Minia's up the inside. So is a layer pod. Everybody's up my inside. Fodger's through as well. Everyone on the curb. Oh, Minia's almost crashed. That's how the entire pack up aside from Suzuki. So I think Suzuki's got this race win now as we go down towards the last corner. Unless I could do anything about it into the last turn on the brakes closing up to Tatsuki Suzuki we're right there right behind him I couldn't quite tip in like I wanted to we've been dive bombed Aji's bashed me out the way a bit of comeuppance from earlier I guess and we're down to fourth place once again we lose that in a last lap scrap with AI but can we beat Artigas the line just to put it on the podium yes I think we just got third place there so there we go then world champion with a podium I'll absolutely take that one. Once again, I just sort of bottled it at the end. That's been a bit of a theme of the sort of second half of the season. On the last lap, I've had enough of a... Well, actually, to be fair, I didn't have a lead coming onto the last lap. Penultimate lap, I had enough of a lead. McPhee crashed. I made a mistake looking at that. I think I've spent the second half of the season too much looking at the standings. Made a mistake. The AI sort of come through. And the thing is, you can't battle a pack of them because you try and sort of set up a move on one and the others just all come up the inside. Now, of course, I, I messed up the penultimate turn, but that final turn, I was in a position to pass Suzuki there. They all came up the inside, though. We did manage to just get past Artigas. To be honest, if it wasn't for Aji, we probably would have got past a lot of them, but... There you go, that's racing. It was a bit cleaner this time, obviously a little bit of touching, but not being completely rammed from behind. So I'll absolutely take that one, and we're still on the podium as well, so I can't be too disappointed. So in the championship then, 60 point lead, that does confirm us as the world champion. We only needed to exit this round with a 25 point advantage, so very, very dominant season overall there. So we are obviously the riders world champion there. Andre Mino, obviously nothing he can do to stop McPhee. So myself and McPhee, we're locked in to first and second in the championship. This battle still rages on a little bit further behind. I think third is still up for grabs between Suzuki and Mino, to be honest. I think that's less than 25 points. Then you've got Garcia and Holgado battling over fifth place with Ortola in there as well. So it's quite competitive as you go further down the field. Fodger moves up to 11th in the championship. But that's the highest he's going to get. He's not going to manage to uh, to get 10th place unless he wins and Guevara scores nothing. I think then they'll tie. So maybe Fodger can get in the top 10 if he gets a race win in the next one. But what a poor season it's been for Fodger. And in the team's championship then, that's looking pretty secure now. Obviously, Leopard, they're out of it. So they can't win the team's championship anymore. It's just between us and Max Racing. 
Of course, there could be a 45 point swing. But as long as I score some decent points, we should be team's champions as well as riders champions. So that would be absolutely fantastic for the team. So with that race done now then, we are the world champion. Let's head back to the career hub, do everything we need to do, and then head into Valencia. So then, from that weekend, we gained 4,800 reputation, which takes up to 92,300, because of course we've not actually got that reputation for winning the championship yet, we don't get that till the year actually completes. As for the credits, we gained 5,410 this weekend, which takes us up to 151,600 credits. So back in the career hub then, and you can see we have got a notification on the technical staff, is that a new, it's a new chief engineer applying, Oliver Stevens. A little bit worse on the engine, a little bit better on the frame, really good on the aero and okay on the electronics. But a lot of these guys are always so good sort of on the aerodynamics, but we just don't need that. But with no other notifications then, let's advance forward to the Valencian GP, week 44 of the year. And there's no notifications here then, so I think it's time to head into this weekend. I'm not sure how the AI are going to stack up here. They're okay at Valencia, I think, but they were pretty good at Sepang, which I wasn't expecting. I feel like I've been mugged off a lot in the second half of this season, so I'm a little bit annoyed by that. So this time, I can absolutely go for it. Just go all out for the win, because we are the champion. There's nothing really to fight for. We do need to try and score a few points, though, just to try and confirm that team's championship. But it's very unlikely that they'll be able to score maximum points anyway. I think Sasaki will probably more likely let the team down there. Although he was a bit more competitive in um, in Malaysia. He was sort of up there in the top group. But I've pretty much not seen Sasaki all season now that I think about it. So again, another example of the AI performance just being so wrong. So then at the end of practice, I was top of the session once again. But this time the order a little bit more normal with Dennis Fodger in second place and Sergio Garcia in third place. So it really is the usual lot, so no Aji being right up there. He was up there at the start of the session. Well, he still is relatively up there. He's only six tenths off, so it does seem like Aji's AI has definitely been improved quite a bit. But hopefully this should be good enough to get us straight through into qualifying two. Although the times are quite close, because it's only a couple of tenths of a second. So, so it would only need a few tenths for them to sort of find on a simulated time for them to all jump ahead of me. But I think I'm going to be relatively secure. So we're heading to qualifying two now, and let's see what happens. So here we are in qualifying two then. And I did actually get to see the combined times very briefly when I jumped between FP2 and this session. And to be honest, this has got to be the track that's been the best for the simulated times. They were pretty much identical. Their simulated times are pretty much identical to their actual on-track times. So I'll give them credit for that. It seems to actually work properly at Valencia. But coming through Q1, then we've got Danny Holgado, Ayumi Sasaki, Tatsuki Suzuki. So that's a bit of a shock, but he's managed to make it through. And Ricardo Rossi. So it's a bit surprised to see Suzuki go through there. We've seen that a couple of times this season. The, uh, the layup our boys have struggled a little bit in the free practice sessions and had to come through Q1. But of course, this track back to normal temperatures. So we're going to go soft, soft. That should be absolutely fine. It's worked everywhere this season. Even at Malaysia, it still worked. It was still quicker than using medium, medium. So I head out onto the track now then. And I'm just going to get everything I've got this weekend. I want to get a pole position. Really want to win again. I'm a little bit annoyed that I finished third in the last race. Especially at a track that... It's uh, supposed to be probably my best, and it is my favourite. I don't know whether it actually really is my best anymore. It always used to be, but I think I've got a lot better at other circuits, and I've probably not, I probably don't play that track that much anymore, so I'm probably not so good at Malaysia anymore. But I think here, Valencia, a track that's a little bit difficult, a little bit technical, though, in some places. That helps against the AI, to be honest. A lot of, uh, well, not a lot of hard breaking zones. Very difficult to kind of pass. There's a couple of uh, little tricky little breaking zones that are very easy to get wrong, so I've got to watch out for that in the race. But yeah, it's, it's not a bad track, uh, really. It used to be really horrible in the old MotoGP games, but last few years, yeah, it's been pretty good. There we are then, getting ready to start our qualifying lap. I haven't been able to get past Guevara properly, which is a bit of a shame, because I did want to pass him. I think we're going to get him into turn one here, but I think he might be a bit of a nuisance on my lap. He might start dive bombing me and stuff. So, coming towards the line then, Mina's currently on pole with a 39-2. What's this lap going to be? 37-8. So, knocking out the part 1.3 seconds quicker than Andrea Mino. Well, I imagine that time will stand. Look how much we left Guevara. I passed Guevara at the first corner, and he actually didn't even stay with me. He didn't hold me up or anything, so that's a bit of a surprise, to be completely honest. Definitely more than 1.3 seconds gained on him on that lap, that's for sure. So yeah, I reckon that time will stand, so I'm happy with that. So I'll end off the session and see what the gap is at the end. So the AI actually didn't improve there. It was actually 1.3 the whole session. So I'm on pole then, 1.3 seconds clear of Andrea Mino in second place. Yama Masia in third. Dennis Onchu in fourth. Uh, Fodger's down in ninth place. Wes McPhee, tenth place. So some of the championship rivals sort of dropping off a little bit there. Suzuki, 18th. So Suzuki's really struggled this weekend. Only just got through Q1 and then qualifies last in Q2. So last race's winner, Tatsuki Suzuki, is going to have a tough weekend ahead of him. 
It does seem like my pace is going to be quite good here, but it does also seem like in the race it might be a bit closer and the AI might be able to battle me a little bit more. So I've just got to be careful, make sure I don't make too many mistakes and try not to look at the leaderboard too much because that uh, that seems to undo a lot of my hard work. So we'll head into the race now then and let's hope it's a good one. So here we are down on the grid then and I think it is going to be one of those races where it's quite simple with the tyre wear. I don't think we have to worry about the tyre wear too much. But I feel like it is just going to be one of those races where they start off a bit slower and do real mean at the end. I, I just have one of those feelings about it. It just feels like that based on their pace. It seems like the pace is there, but it takes them a few laps to unlock it. So it could be a little bit of a tense finale again. If I get a good start and put a second or so into them, they might be able to reel it back in a bit like they did in Aragon and I suppose uh, also in, in Sepang as well, where they sort of reeled that gap in. But it never got over a second, so it was always close. And then I made a little mistake. So that, that's the thing. If you don't have a second and you make one mistake, well, that's it. The gap is completely gone. So I've just got to make sure. Don't make too many mistakes because I just want to end off this season with another win. We're champion. We've got nothing to lose. So let's go for it. Riders in position. The green flag waving at the back of the field. Maximum focus now. Only a few seconds before the start of the Valencian Grand Prix. So actually, I said I have nothing to lose, but I do have the team's championship to think about. But even still, I need to finish as high up as I can for that. So wait for the lights to go here then at Valencia. Lights out and away we go. We've had a pretty good start already. I think once again, we are going to get the whole shot into turn one. Just got to make sure I don't run really wide into turn one like I did in the last race. It is tricky to get the, uh, the braking for the very first quarter of the race correct. Because of course, you approach it at a completely different speed than you have all weekend. And there's no way to practice it throughout a weekend, of course. You've got to stop on the straight and uh, you can do a practice start, of course, but obviously that's in the designated area, which is never on the start finish straight. Or well, thought it was going to get a shot up this morning there, thought it was going to go on the green, just managed to keep off of it. So, so far, eight tenths of a second ahead of Mino. It's been a pretty decent start. It's been a crash behind, not sure who it is. So I've got the gap up to 1.2, nearly 1.3 at the end of that first lap, although it has come down a little bit. I've not got the best run out of the last corner. They I have reeled me in a little bit on this third lap. I put the gap out by another three attempts on lap two, and now it's only a second again. So I, I think I was right. It is one of those races where they're going to start creeping up on me. So I've upped my pace on this lap to try and combat that a little bit. You can see I'm about to do my new personal best lap of the race, 39-1. I picked up a track limits warning. I am pushing on to try to get away from them because they are they do keep closing in on me in some sections. They are they are pretty quick. That's exactly what I thought it was going to be one of those races where they just pick up the pace that goes on. They start piling on the pressure. And the difference is, earlier on in the season, I'd make the most of those opening laps and pull further away. I'd use more power mode 3. But as the season's gone on, I've got complacent. I think that's why I've been mugged a bit more lately, because once they start catching up, it's a, it's a smaller gap they've got to take out of me. We're on the final lap of the race now. We've got a second, which we do know is not necessarily safe. Uh, we saw that an hour gone, so I'm going to keep pushing on. Another track limits warning. So the last couple of races, we've picked up a few track limits warnings to push on. So it seems like maybe the AI's pace has been improved. Perhaps they fixed the AI a little bit in the patch. Or maybe it's just some of these tracks. But they definitely seem like they're uh, putting me under more pressure in the last few episodes. Or at least in this episode. I've been trying to pick up the pace to pull away from them. But I should be fine. 1.1 seconds with a quarter to go. Not even the AI can uh, die from, from that far behind, I don't think. Here we are then, into the last corner. Out the last corner. The last race of Moto3. And we've managed to win it, so we've won our first race since becoming world champion. And we should have won the team's championship as well, so that's fantastic. So this is what I mean, they up their pace right at the end, because they set new fastest laps of the race, 39-1. And it does really seem that, like, outside of qualified trim, their pace is not too bad. And it's been like that for a lot of the races in the second half of the season. Like, their race pace has been good, but their qualified pace hasn't. A, a lot more like MotoGP 21 where that's where they were losing out. We've won the race there, head of Andrea Mino in second position. So final race of the season, ending off Moto3 in style as the world champion with a race win and securing the team's championship as well. That is fantastic. So looking at that Riders' Championship then, we'll have a bit more of a thorough look through, just see where people finished. Holgado actually managed to get that fifth place away from Sergio Garcia. Obviously Suzuki stood no chance at beating Mino after his poor qualifying and Mino second place of the race there. Messia moves ahead of Artigas. Guevara stays 10th. Onchu actually moves back ahead of Fodger. So if Dennis Fodger doesn't even break the 100 points threshold in my career mode here, 99 points after 21 races, he will be disappointed with that. 
That is just not really what Dennis uh, Dennis Fodder expected. That's like four and a half points per race. He's not picked up a lot of points there. Marrera in 13th place. Aji ends up 14th after a really strong end to the season with Toba in 15th. Let's have a look where my closest teammate is. Bertelli in 22nd, just out of Bartolini in 23rd. They're pretty close, 32 and 29 points respectively. Th over 300 behind me though, so I think I was the dominant teammate. And everyone actually managed to score points this season as well. You can see Fallon at the bottom of the table there with three points. So on to the team's championship then, of course, like we established, we have already won that one with Max Racing in second place, but both Snipers and Io jumped ahead of Leopard Race at the final round, so only fifth in the championship there for Leopard Racing. Kind of crazy that combined, they only have 300 points, and I have 354 alone. That That is quite mad, really. It's actually, I've outscored every team myself. Max Racing, 354 points, and that's how many points I have myself. So I actually have the same amount of points as Max Racing. So my teammates combined over the season have only contributed 50 points then towards the, uh, the team's championship, which is uh, interesting. Obviously, it takes the top two from each race. So yeah, my teammates only combining 50 points together to actually help. But that does make the difference because that's why we've beat Max Racing. So fair play, I guess, but they really didn't pull their weight, did they? So with the final race done then, the championship standings looked at. Let's head back to the career hub. We might have to watch the championship ceremony. I'm not 100% sure. I imagine it's exactly the same as last year's game though and the game before and the game before that. So yeah, it's, uh, it doesn't change an awful amount, but it's still there to watch. And then we can have a look at our stats as well to see how we did over the whole season. It's been a long season for this lad, full of bitter disappointment and unrestrained joy. He fell, he got up again and never looked back. It's taken a lot of sacrifice, but now we can say it was all worth it. He is the new Moto3 world champion. So yeah, it seems like it's the exact same cutscene. So imagine we're going to walk out the back of the box in a minute into the room with uh, all the helmets and go and get the trophy. So then, from that weekend, we gained 5,200 reputation, which takes up to 97,500. So, so close to that 100,000 threshold. I bet we could have got that if we didn't get so unlucky in some of the races. I imagine we will have uh, surpassed that, although we'll probably surpass it in a minute when the season finishes. As for the race, back for that 6,110 credits. It's been a while since we got that for the race win. That takes us up to 156,410 so we actually get it right here. So we get our rewards for winning the championship. We only get 10,000 reputation for actually winning the championship. I guess that's just for meeting the objectives rather than actually winning, which is a little bit disappointing there. And then, of course, we met the objectives on the credits as well. So we got 34,540. So now I've got nearly 200,000 credits. We've got 190,950 credits and 107,500 reputation. And the stats are right there, so we can just uh, look at those and don't have to go out of his way to look at that. So 9 wins, 13 podiums, and 17 pole positions. So only 4 races then, we didn't get pole, and obviously 2 of those were the first 2 races of the season, Qatar and Indonesia. One of them's Thailand, because it was wet, and I'm not sure about it. Was the other one Austria? No, Austria was dry, I think we did get pole position there. I'm trying to think where the other track, we didn't get pole? Catalonia, I think it was Catalonia, I don't think we got pole there, so that's the 4 races. You can see we're pretty consistent, I'm quite surprised the championship went so close to the wire. Because you think nine wins, that's like over a third of the season. 17 poles, 13 podiums. So we're on the podium a lot, but we had a lot of off races. You can see, obviously, we had Thailand where we finished 12th because it was wet. You see, we, we had a bit of a run there. 5th, 6th, 5th for um, Austria, San Marino, and Aragon. We lost a lot of points there. 
Seventh in Mugello. I always forget about Mugello, how many points we lost there with that mistake. So, yeah, we could have wrapped up this championship a lot quicker. You can also see Germany 30th. Well, we got knocked off there. So a lot of the races where we didn't do too well weren't really my fault, really. The only one that I can really put down to me being poor was, uh, was Chang, and that's just because it was wet. So then, back in the career hub, there's just one more notification to deal with. That is another chief engineer. So the, so the chief engineer is really coming in. So we've got Timothy Booth. Now, this is the kind of guy I want, you see. I'm not going to sign him just yet, I don't think. Although, maybe I will. I don't know. But that's the kind of guy I want, you see. Because he's got 49 on the engine, 49 on the frame. And then he is still better than nothing on the, the aero and the electronics. So he still is a step up. I'm not 100% sure if we're going to sign him just yet. Might hold on to him for a little bit. But I don't need any others now that I've got him. Although, Paul Jefferson's pretty good. But he's not so well-rounded. It's better to get one that's well-rounded rather than one that's dominant in a specific area. So with that dealt with then, that brings this episode to a close. It brings Moto3 as a whole to a close. So Moto3, we are done with that in career mode now. We'll be moving on to Moto2 in the next episode. So I'll be sorting out which team I'm going to ride for and doing the first race in the next one. If you want to let me know in the comments below if there's any preference on the team, we could have a look quickly to see what teams are actually interested so I can uh, show you which ones. So, so we've got Flexbox HB40, RW Racing, Ital Trans, MB Conveyor Speed Up, Idemitsu, MV Augusta, we've got Mandalika Sag, and American Racing. Well, American Racing, they're probably going to sign an American rider, so I want to try and keep it quite realistic. So maybe Honda Team Asia and American Racing may be a little bit out of the, the question there because obviously they tend to just hire riders from certain regions. But any of the others, if you've got preference on any of those, do let me know in the comments below. It's always nice to have a bit of your guys' input, especially when we're actually deciding the team. So do let me know if, uh, if you have seen this video early enough. Let me know which team you'd like me to go with. But I hope you guys have enjoyed that episode. hope you've enjoyed the whole season. And hopefully you will enjoy Moto2 going forward. But I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Hope you're all safe. I shall see you in the next one.